let's take a look at how the F-16 is becoming even more capable and lethal with a Block 70 update. The F-16 is the most produced Western fighter to date. With over 4,500 examples built, it has become the mainstay of many air forces across the world. A fighter jet of many firsts, the F-16 was the first aircraft to use a fly-by-wire system which allows it to be more maneuverable than earlier generation fighters. Instead of using direct cable and pulley connections to its flight controls, the F-16's fly-by-wire system interprets the input applied by the pilot and quickly determines how best to move the control surfaces to obtain the desired maneuver. Since the F-16 can't fly without these computer-commanded inputs, the flight control system has quadruple redundancy. This use of digital controls instead of analog ones led to one of the aircraft's early nicknames, the Electric Jet. More on that later. The F-16 was initially intended to be a daytime dogfighter, and as a result features a lightweight reinforced airframe designed to sustain 9 Gs. Along with the reinforced airframe, the pilot's seat is reclined 30 degrees instead of the usual 12 or so degrees found on other fourth generation aircraft. This reclined angle along with the control stick being placed on the right side instead of in the center helps the pilot sustain higher G loads for longer periods. Over its long service life, the F-16 has evolved from a day fighter to a true multi-role workhorse. The numbers don't lie. With more than 4,500 examples built and some 3,000 operational examples in 25 countries today, it's fair to say that the F-16 is the world's most successful combat-proven multi-role jet fighter ever produced. So how do you take one of the best fighters ever built and make it even better? The answer is Block 70. This latest version of the F-16, dubbed Block 70 72, is equipped with new capabilities and is based on the F-16V configuration. One of its biggest enhancements is the use of an advanced active electronically scanned array or ASA radar, along with an all-new avionics architecture. The APG-83 radar gives F-16's fifth generation radar capabilities since it uses hardware and software commonality found in both the F-22 Raptor and F-35 Lightning radars. Another upgrade is the implementation of the Automatic Ground Collision Avoidance System or Auto GCAS. This system is designed to reduce incidents of what is known as controlled flight into terrain or CFIT. Auto GCAS was jointly developed by Lockheed Skunk Works, NASA, and the Air Force. This system has already saved the lives of seven pilots and six F-16s since entering service. And it's critical since given the F-16's air-to-ground capabilities, it usually finds itself maneuvering very close to terrain. The Block 70 F-16 also builds on 36 years of weapon integration testing for the platform. In fact, Lockheed Martin has certified more than 3,000 carriage and release configurations for over 180 different types of stores. Block 70 will continue this long tradition of multi-munitions capabilities, with newer weapons and development being incorporated into the F-16's long list of available options. Today's video is brought to you by Private Internet Access, or PIA. Private Internet Access is the world's most transparent VPN with over 30 million downloads. All you need to do is download it, turn it on, and then your internet traffic is protected. Once you do, PIA will hide your IP address, encrypt your internet connection to shield your digital life from your internet service provider and government sensors. PIA never records or stores user data. They've even proven this policy multiple times in court. Along with securing your internet experience, PIA has 50 servers in 50 states, and servers all over the world. Why is this so important? Well, the movie Top Gun is not available on US Netflix, but with PIA you can switch over to the Australia or Japan servers and watch Top Gun. This is a solution for thousands of other movies that aren't available in your region. So if you want to make your internet experience freer and more secure, go to piavpn.com slash pilotphotog, link in the description below. By signing up with this offer, you'll get 83% off. That's only $2.03 per month, with four months free for VPN protection and peace of mind. Along with conformal fuel tanks to extend range and loiter times, the Block 70 F-16 also incorporates a newer aircraft structure that will allow it to last 50% longer than previous production F-16 aircraft. This should allow the F-16 to operate into the 2060s. If that does become the case, it would mean that the F-16 will end up serving for some 90 years, possibly even 100. So where did this incredibly versatile nimble jet come from? The origins of the F-16 go all the way back to the Vietnam War. That conflict revealed both the need for better training and for maneuverable air superiority fighters. As a result, Colonel John Boyd and mathematician Thomas Christie developed the theory known as energy maneuverability, which quantified an aircraft's performance. 
This theory allowed designers to predict aircraft capabilities and design trade-offs. In the late 1960s, Boyd assembled a group of like-minded military and civilian thought leaders, and this new group became known as the Fighter Mafia. This Fighter Mafia group was able to initiate a technology evaluation program, which later became known as the Lightweight Fighter Program, or LWF. Basically, up to this point, Air Force fighters had been getting bigger, heavier, and more expensive. Case in point, the F-15, which was being developed at this time. And while the F-15 was and is a great airplane, the Air Force simply could not afford to equip all of its squadrons with larger, more expensive F-15s. Additionally, NATO allies such as Belgium, Denmark, and Norway were looking to replace their aging F-104s. This group of countries became known as the European Participating Air Force, or EPAF. Back to the lightweight fighter program. The LWF proposed an inexpensive, lightweight aircraft that could maneuver with minimum possible energy loss along with an increased thrust-to-weight ratio. Recognizing the need for a less expensive fighter to fill the ranks, the Air Force explored the advanced day fighter concept, which fit the LWF goals perfectly. And to settle any concerns that the ADF program would take away from the F-15, then Secretary of Defense Schlesinger made it clear that any ADF order would be in addition to the F-15. The requirements were for a 20,000 pound aircraft that could operate at speeds between Mach 0.6 and 1.6 and at altitudes of 30 to 40,000 feet. Five manufacturers submitted designs with competition being narrowed down to two finalists, the General Dynamics YF-16 and the Northrop YF-17. These two prototypes would compete in fly-off competitions starting in 1974, which tested various aspects of performance against one another. After intense competition, the YF-16 was chosen by the Air Force in 1975. This decision was based on the fact that the YF-16 had superior climb rates, acceleration, endurance, and turn rates. Additionally, the YF-16 used the Pratt & Whitney F-100 engine, the same engine found on the F-15. This commonality would help further reduce costs for both the F-15 and F-16. As mentioned earlier, the F-16 was designed for 9G maneuvers on full internal fuel, and as the aircraft evolved from just a day air-to-air -air fighter, to a true multi-role fighter, this proved extremely useful. Through a series of acquisitions and mergers, the F-16 is today produced by Lockheed Martin. Most F-16s were built in Fort Worth, Texas, with production recently being moved to Greenville, South Carolina in order to make room for the new F-35s being built. As far as operators, for the United States, the F-16 serves in the Air Force National Guard Air Reserve Command and the Air Force Demonstration Team, aka the Thunderbirds and even the U.S. Navy uses F-16s as adversary or aggressor aircraft. Internationally, the F-16 serves with the air forces of over 25 nations. Given this, it's safe to say that the F-16 is legitimately a global fighter that operates in all environments. Previously, we mentioned that the F-16 was referred to as the electric jet in its early days. Usually, the Air Force and its pilots will use the same nickname as the official designation of an aircraft, such as the F-15 Eagle. But the F-16 has actually gone by two and some say even three nicknames. So how did this happen? Back in 1976, the Air Force held a Name the Plane contest for the F-16. After many entries and four years later, the F-16 was officially named the Fighting Falcon by the Air Force. The unveiling of the name took place at Hill Air Force Base in Utah and local artists painted this logo on the F-16 to commemorate that event. The pilots, however, had already given the F-16 their own nickname. The Hill Air Force Base was the first F-16 base and one of the proposed names was Viper. As to how the pilots came up with Viper, Lt. Col. Pat Gums McAdoo recalls it best. At the end of the runway, the F-16 did resemble a Cobra or something as it approached you. However, I think Northrop already had taken that name for the YF-17. We all voted and Viper came in really high. Seems there was a series on TV that had Colonial Vipers flying off Battlestar Galactica. In any case, the generals didn't want a plane named after some snake. Even after the Fighting Falcon name became official, pilots and crews who worked on the plane referred to the F-16 as Viper. In fact, the award for excellent airmanship in the F-16 is named in memory of Joe Bill Dryden and is called the Semper Viper. Hopefully I pronounced that right. Finally, the F-16 does have one other nickname, though not in widespread use today as when the airplane was first introduced. As we mentioned earlier, the F-16 was the first aircraft to rely entirely on sending electrical signals to relay flight commands and because of this was also known as the electric jet. So which is it? Fighting Falcon, Viper, or electric jet? It depends on who you talk to, but most people refer to the F-16 as the Viper, especially those who fly or work on them. Legacy. 
When the F-16 was first introduced, it served as a first response frontline fighter during the Cold War. Following the collapse of the Soviet Union, the Air Force, National Guard, and Air Force Reserve flew the F-16 during Operation Desert Storm in 1991 and also in the Balkans during the late 1990s. F-16s have also patrolled the no-fly zones in Iraq along with serving during the wars in Afghanistan, Operation Enduring Freedom which began in 2001, and Iraq, Operation Iraqi Freedom which began in 2003. F-16s also took part in the intervention in Libya. And keep in mind, these are just U.S. operations with the F-16. Internationally, I could probably do an entire video about how other countries have employed the venerable Viper. Let me know if you'd like to see a video on that. It's amazing to think that with its already storied history, the F-16 may only just be getting started. Since today, there are still F-16s in production, and with structural and capability upgrades in progress such as Block 70, the F-16 should operate into the 2060s and beyond. With its multi-mission capability, relatively inexpensive operating costs, some people argue that the F-16 is the best all-around fourth-generation airplane in the skies today. What do you think? Let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching. If you enjoy this content, go ahead and click subscribe and then mash that bell so you don't miss any videos when they come out. Thank you to my patrons and channel members who directly support this channel. If you'd like to become a supporter, get behind the scenes access, and even recommend topics for future videos, I'll leave links in the description below. Now you know!